Hey guys, this is Omer from MMOs.com, and with a quick first impressions gameplay video for Allods Online, a 3D fantasy MMORPG developed and published by the Russian studio My.com. I'll spend about 10 to 15 minutes running around checking this game out. Make some comments. If you guys want to play Allods Online or just learn more about it, do check out the full review on MMOs.com on the link below. And yes, the first thing you're probably thinking is, wow, this game looks a lot like WoW. And when people throw the word WoW clone around, I feel like it's thrown around very liberally. In this case, the art style is very much like WoW. Everything from the game's interface to the look, it just screams WoW. And uh, it's not necessarily a bad thing either because why not copy a very successful game? So we have the Empire and the Alliance over here. We made a character on the Empire and I skipped the tutorial, so we'll start from there. Didn't want to show the character creator though because there's actually a fair variety of classes over here. Oddly, every race has different names for all the classes, like the, for the Gibberlings, it's just called a Mage. For the Elves, it's called an Archmage, so clearly it must be better for them. And some of them are really weird, like a Bard is a Storyteller when you're playing a Pridden. And it just gets really, really silly on some of these. Vanquisher sounds really cool, but again, some of them are just really absurd. If you can find the really absurd ones. Anyway, let's, let's, go, let's go into the game right now. And here we go. Let's get out of here. Exit this character right here. Yes. And let's go log on Remote X. I couldn't make it Remote because it was taken, and Remote with two Ys was also taken. What are the odds of that, right? Come on. Uh, this game first came out in 2010, and back then it was on Cheap Potato, and I played it back then, and I actually really liked it. But they kind of really screwed up the cash shop back then, and something called Fear of Death really ruined the game, and I haven't touched it since. But it did relaunch on Steam in J June of 2016, so, so it's an appropriate time to make a video for it. Look at my character's man stash. Look how manly man my character is. One of the really cool thing about the, the the way the game is set up that I really like is there are actually there are actually subscription servers and free to play servers, so you kind of get the best of both worlds. But in this case, it kind of kind of works against it because you have a small player base being segmented by subscription and free to play. And of course, in the subscription server, there are no uh, there are no cash shop benefits as there are in the free to play server. I know a lot of people play played this game for a long time, and the biggest complaint on the free to play server is of course those uh, pesky cash up items which are which play a pretty big role in that lots because it really affects actual in-game stuff so it's not just cosmetics to get these cowberry bushes I have to get 12 of these literally every game has a one of these quest lines over here so we just finished the game's tutorial and uh, this guy's also uh, gathering this nonsense with me you can see my character sheet even the interface to the character sheet looks very much like wow my character's kind of like a necromancer slash warlock a stranger has appeared the stranger is my hellion not to be confused with StarCraft II Hellions, the Terran unit. Let's go loot these, get more berry bushes. Any 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 game that has these quests where you gather like berries and stuff, it should always limit to like three or something because it's always stupid easy and it's really pointless. Luckily, you do get two at a time. My character is wearing a, like a skirt, but it's he's still manly, man. You do start with some cash shop goodies, so I'm really taking a look at these, but let's see. Even the bag, like literally every aspect of this game is inspired by WoW. Uh, the game is, I remember the game having a really awesome soundtrack too back when I played ages ago. We can look at our, we have our boutique menu over here and boutique is for cash shop goodies. So we get a free bag slot which is, you can equip a, what, you cannot equip a smaller bag, nice. Apparently it's 18 slots is not good enough for me. We get this, use, receive 30,000 bonus experience points, let's go do that. Holy crap, we just, uh, we got a lot of experience for that, that's nice. But the way it works I think is uh, you get your rest experience over there. So up to 30,000 experience you get doubled. Yeah, you can see you get doubled for 30,000 experience. And you can buy all these goodies in the cash shop too. Let's, let's might as well use all the scrolls. We get some uh, followers box too. Let's get a reward. My level's too low. I can't open that just yet. So the game gives you these nice cash shop goodies to start with. Just a handful so you get a taste. Let's go loot more berry bushes for this quest. I, I do remember having a lot of fun with this back in the day. So it's even though it is a WoW clone, it kind of works for it, you know? Might as well copy a game that's pretty solid. Loot these. Oh, don't you dare take my bush my berries over there, Lieutenant Spooz. Alright, attention and coordination. We did it, boys. Now we go over here. Even the map. Literally every as aspect of this game screams kind of wild clone. Boom! Assigned talent points. That plus line looked like Diablo for some reason. Uh, we're going to point into... We have we have four points right now into our talent tree. You do get talents right away. I think WoW at one point made so you, you start gaining them a little bit later. I, I haven't played WoW since Pandaria, and even then I kind of forgot because... I don't know, I feel like... I'm kind of done with WoW for now. Chief Physician, get some combat skills. I'm good to go. Working on that quest. I gotta kill, I gotta use spark, kill some spark elementals, and they are gonna be outside of here. Finally, we get to fight some things. And we did fight things in the tutorial as well. I mean, visually, the game looks pretty solid. I mean, it's uh came out in 2010, so for a 2010 game, I feel like these this no, this game's art style ages really, really well. Because even though it's not great, it still looks really nice on a modern PC. 
And I just desound my enemy because I'm retarded. But we'll, uh, we'll kill these water elementals. <laughs> Even the water elementals. Holy crap. So much of this game is inspired by, inspired by WoW. Combat is remarkably fluid. Uh, music is great. So it has some pretty decent production value. Honestly, the biggest and most disastrous aspect of Allot Online, I think most people would agree with me, is the game's cash shop is very, very much pay to win. Uh, you can get stat bonuses, you can get buffs, and you can even, I believe you can even get some gear in the, the loot boxes. So they, have, they have the lock boxes as well. I mean, the cash shop is actually very advanced. They do a lot of, like, upselling to you. Look up, there's so many items in the cash shop. It's just, it's literally one of the most in-depth cash shops I've seen in a game. And what's ridiculous, you can even like, you can even borrow money in the cash shop. Can we borrow 50? Let's go do it, boys. And yeah, I, I just borrowed 50 cash shop currencies. And uh, it's based on how much you've added to your account. So you can't borrow that much. If, if you spent a lot of money, you can borrow. And I think you gotta repay it like automatically if you uh, if you charge up your account. So they've really mastered like getting you to spend like down to the, they really got the science figured out for that. Let's go summon my dude. Where's my, where's my buddy? My champion, I, I de summoned them again. He's here, he's here now. I kill a few more of these. What about those? Not three out of five. There you go. So it's just the cash up is really silly and it kind of takes to the next level. But if you want to play the PVE experience, it's actually you can you can probably enjoy the full like uh, you get the max level pretty easily without uh, ever spending a dime or having having to spend a dime. But if you want to participate in some of the late game PVP and be competitive in that regards, you do have to spend money. But the good thing is if you if you really do enjoy the game. And you want to play without any you know, unfair advantage, you can always play the subscription server. But I, even though it's a nice balance, I, I don't like the fact that if, if you don't want to pay to win, you have to pay monthly. I mean, free to play shouldn't be about, uh, you know, if, if, if pay to win, just ruin the game. And if you want to avoid it, you got to pay. I mean, some games do a lot better than others. Terra, for example, has a pretty solid cash shop. As did Maple Story back in the day when they only had cosmetics, but then that, that changed as well. Okay, so we got to kill a couple of these spark elementals, and we are done with this quest. Use number three over there, Avid Shadows, which sounds a lot like uh, Shadow War Paint from my priest. And wow. And of course, these guys are super, super easy early on. My character uses his Blood Bank to cast certain spells. Every time I cast uh, this ability over here, it adds my Blood ba Blood Bank. Kind of acts in my mana from a various spells. So we're going to run over there. I don't think we start with a mount, unfortunately, so we can't get there very quickly. We got to walk there nice and slow. We can see my other bad goodies while we wait. Uh, Chest of the Explorer. We're level six. We can open it now. New equipment and a costume. Ooh, what do we got? We got another chest. A chest open with more chests. The magic. We got a vial, vial of this. Resurrect early from purgatory. Cast special patronage spells. Okay. Costume of the Zealous Defiler. Let's go equip that bad boy. You do a little wardrobe page over here so we can see. We can equip this. That makes me look a little bit cooler. How about this one? What? This one? This looks the same as what I had before. This is literally nothing. I don't want that. Let's go equip this one. So it looks kind of... Kind of regal. Look how classy I look. Little dagger on the side. Where, where are my spark elementals at? There they are. You can see the glow in the distance too. I mean, I do want to emphasize it's a really polished game, though it doesn't do too much different. I mean, I remember playing Roots of Magic, which is probably the, like the most comparable game to this because it's the same WoW-inspired gameplay and art style. But at least in Roots of Magic, you had the dual classing system, which was kind of cool. I remember I, I had a lot of fun with that. You don't have any dual classing in this game, but it's just a really polished, older MRPG experience. And honestly, a game like this ages, I think, much better than something like uh, Shea or Last Chaos. But I can't imagine too many newer players jumping to the game. Health Resort Outskirts. We're in the res outskirts of the Health Resort. I think it was called like Cloud Nine Health Resort area before too, which is a pretty silly name. Clearly, Cloud Nine, the the pro team, has a presence in uh, Allies Online. Alright, this guy's getting easily killed. This guy. I remember I had a lot of trouble questing when this game first launched on G Potato because it, it was hella packed. And you had certain quests that you know, required you to kill like a certain NPC. And that NPC existed in like the persistent world. So he'd be camp there'd be like a room with like 50 people waiting to kill that one NPC. And whoever aggroes him first gets the kill credit. So I waited like 30 minutes inside this little house trying to get that quest done because everyone was aggroing it before me. Good times. And he didn't instantly respawn either. You had to wait for it. And even though, like, that's kind of silly and prevents you from enjoying the game, it really, I feel like it added, you know, it made the game feel full, which is really nice. But there are people still playing Allods Online, clearly. It's on Steam now, and the Steam player base is, like, over 100 since it launched. It's not a great number, but a lot of people still play on the, uh, the regular client as well. One of the Russian clients on Steam as well, but it is, it is in English now for realsies. Nice, we just completed this quest. And let's go hand it in. So we have... Not sure what those are over there. Let's 
bust these out over here. What else we got going on? Can we click on these? What are these? Bonus marks of fate. 100% more marks of fate when we complete my quest. See, so yeah, these are for when you use your scrolls. You get the bonus XP. Look how cute that puppy is. Alad's online has cute puppies. And this guy's not really cute, but his puppy's really cute, so let's be friends with him. Just to play with the dog. He doesn't want to talk to us. Music is very cheerful in the background. Doesn't really fit this scene where I am. We have to go all the way over there still. I definitely need a mount right now. But I feel like a lot of games spoiled me because you get mounts super early in like modern RPGs. Whereas, uh, I remember in WoW, I think it was level 30 for the first map back in the day, but you, you get it pretty early there too now. I haven't played WoW in ages though. Let's go talk to these guys. Good old green ex uh, question mark, uh, uh, check marks to notify you complete the quest. Good to see a few beginners here too because some people do play the game still. Even this menu, guys. This menu looks so much like the WoW Quest menu. And obviously, WoW doesn't have a monopoly on this style of menu, but it did popularize it. And you, you can't, like, click F to, like, skip this either. You have to actually click complete. Let's go do that. I'm kind of spoiled from clicking F, 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 F in modern games, whether it's Blade and Soul or, uh... I think uh, Black Desert had something like that, too. We can skip through the quest text very easily. Nice. Grab that quest, too. And we run over there. Uh, we're, I mean, once we leave here, we're in the, the big city, and the city in this game is just ginormous. They get the scaling right, it's just a monstrously large city. Uh, we can't do anything with that. Very cheerful music in the background. I can use, uh, I can open these at level 10, so I gotta wait for these. Chest of the Explorers. I like how it's, there's Russian text up here. It is a Russian developed game. There aren't that many Russian developed games. I remember when this first came out, it was one of the highest budget, like, free to play Russian games. Probably doesn't mean that much, but I think they spent over like 10 million on the game, if I remember correctly. It's either 2 million or 10 million. I know they're vastly different numbers, but I remember they made a point to say they spent a lot of money on it. And again, it, it still aged really well, so despite you know being an older game, I, I can still see some of the appeal because it, it is a it is a polished experience. But if you want to take PP pretty seriously, be prepared to either get dunked or have to spend a lot of money. Which I'm sure I know I know would be a big turnoff for a lot of people. Uh, demon, go to the location on the Asheville coast marked by my map. Yeah, we're totally here. All right, we gotta click Z over here now. We're scattering something. The dust has disappeared. The game is called Allod as well because uh, there's this huge astral like area where you can travel in your ships. I think you get those around level 35, so you can explore that area. Then that's how you get to the Allod, and those are kind of your instance missions. But uh, I think you begin your quest around level 35 to get your ship. And Again, the PP is not going to be that exciting with a small player base. I mean, this is your... I, I accidentally clicked the event calendar. The game does have arena PP, I think. You can see your stats on... Your recorded stats on, our, on your character page, if I can find it. it should, there's achievements, too. There you go, PP kills. 3v3, 6v6. And we can talk to this guy again. What a quest. And these early quests are just brain dead easy. If I remember correctly, I remember this being a little bit difficult back when it was on G-Potato. But it's clearly they went the easy route. I mean, a lot of games just make their game, like, they dumb down the early experience. I feel like, especially when the game matures, they make the early experience way, way easier. Whether it's World of Warcraft, Dark Age of Camelot, MapleStory, Islands Online, literally so many games have done it. Like, older games that used to be somewhat difficult, they go back and make the early experience super easy. I think that they think that doing that makes it more attractive to new players so they can catch up to their friends. But I don't know, I just kind of... A game can't be super easy. I, 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 when I die in a game, that makes me like, okay, I did something wrong. I want to go get, grind some better gear and then get better. Because if you if you if you're just stomping everything, gear upgrades just feel kind of useless. Because I want gear upgrades to make me feel like, all right, I got stronger. And you don't get that feeling in so many games when it's just stupid easy. And unfortunately, all these games early on are going to be stupid easy. A lot of games, not all games, obviously. Discharge from the resort. Finally, we're leaving this place. Travel to Nesbograd. And we're going that way. Let's see if I got any more. We got a talent point over here to, point, to spend. We're going to put a point there. We're going to put a point here. And these are recommended. Let's go with these. Howl of Death. Why not? And let's go learn all these. We got a new, new spell over here too. A uh, few things people might be curious about. There's also these. Uh, there are global cooldowns. So when you cast a spell, everything goes on cooldown for a second. I'm not a fan of that. But so many games do it now. that It just kind of feels like the norm. But this spell doesn't. What does this do? Player... To your patron that restores prayer to your patron restores your man and health. Uh, nice. It just lets you meditate. But all, all your spells are gonna have that uh, that global cooldown. Unfortunately. Go in here. I really miss this guy. I gotta go around. Or no, he he should be right over here. There we go. Derp derp. 
the policeman. We are playing on the basically Empire. I think it's basically the Horde side. We gotta go this way, JK. There we go. I feel like that was not accurately represented on the map. The map, like, it, like, it totally says it over there. This is the wrong NPC. Never mind. So it was accurately represented on the map. All right, we do have to go over here. Oh, my movement helps you travel. Nice. Uh, nice. Let's go do that. So auto move. Auto move with my current quest. Nice. All right, I talked to this guy, but he's got literally like. Come on. Did I not get the? Oh, I gotta click X over here. I thought you had an exclamation mark on his head, but nope. You have to actually click on your item. I give him your pass that, that way. Uh, the new order is the latest expansion as this video. So they're still updating the game, even though it's over five years old. And now we are in the massive city. There's tons of quests over here. We won't be leaving the city for a long time. But one thing this game got kind of right is this, the proportions and scale of buildings. A lot of games get that completely wrong. Here, like, everything does feel kind of massive. Uh, it vaguely reminds me of Icarus Online scale, which is kind of correct as well. But the buildings here look a little bit bigger. Like, look how cool some of these buildings look. Aesthetically, the game still looks really good, I think. Give the bad girl coin. Pretty sure you get nothing for that, but we gave it to him. We're a nice guy. Good to see players over here, too. And again, it's because the game launched on Steam relatively recently. So you have a pretty nice influx of new players over here. But yeah, it's a... Uh, I would say, if you're looking for an MRPG just to play, you know, not... And you don't care about competitive PvP. Maybe a lot of times worth a try. It runs well, even on older PCs now. And, uh... It's been around for over five years, so I suspect it'll, it'll, it'll stay alive a bit longer. Tons of quests. Overall, it, I, it feels like a solid experience. But the pay-to-win elements are obviously a huge drag on the game. I mean... It's just in the game. It's not as bad as like League of Angels or any Chinese games, but they're there and it's a big turn off for a lot of people. But if you want to play for the PvE and you know, you, you don't have to spend money to enjoy the game. And that's, that's how it's online, boys. If you guys want to play or just learn more about it, check the full review on emos.com on the link below. Anyway guys, later.